Okay, so good evening all. Hope I'm uh, properly audible and visible to you. We'll be starting today's week five session um, so of experimental biology. I hope I can, uh, you can hear me and uh, see my screen. So today's uh, session is tutorial session of week five for experimental biology. So I'm the teaching assistant of the course uh, experimental biotechnology. I hope some someone has some question. Okay, thanks, uh, Upasna. So, so the course in, uh, course instructor is Professor Vishal Trivedi and. Uh, so you can register for the course uh, you have i think most of you have already registered and uh, attending classes so there are a couple of like uh, every week uh, uh, upload happens for those uh, classes by professor uh, vishal so you have to go through those uh, recorded lectures carefully uh, you have to understand those and uh, every assignments and all all based on whatever uh, he ta uh, teaches during the lecture sessions okay and if you have any doubt uh, during uh, by listening for listening for the lectures and all for the solving assignments this is a tutorial session you will get to know uh, how to solve questions and what is the solutions uh, uh, for those assignments which you already submitted and all and also I go through uh, and also I go through those uh, the lectures by Professor Vishal Trivedi uh, to uh, again to revise and to revisit for you so that the next assignment you can clearly understand and do okay at your own. So uh, week one, uh, week two, and week three and week four tutorial has been completed. Uh, today we are at week five, and assignment one, two, three has been discussed. So if you have missed any class or if you have attended, and again you want to listen or uh, revisit, you this is a YouTube li link of all tutorial classes. You um, multiple times you can go through and uh, listen to. This is a folder link where uh, I upload all the tutorial slides which I uh, show and which I use to uh, discuss with you, okay? So uh, today we'll be starting with week four assignment which you al already have uh, submitted. So uh, if you have any question, you can just uh, comment down in the chat section uh, so that I can read out and then uh, solve for you. So the first question is extraction of butanol from fermentation broth which is water based, which has butanol concentration of 20 gram per liter, is performed by adding dichloromethane DCM, which is and which is an organic solvent, and mixing it. After mixing and phase separation, the organic fraction is estimated to have butanol concentration of 5 gram per liter. What is the distribution coefficient of butanol? So, the question is. So you have extracted, you have extracted butanol, okay, from fermentation broth. So that is water based, water based, which has butanol concentration of, sorry, which has which has butanol concentration of 20 gram per liter 
and uh, which has butanol concentration of this is performed by adding DCM and mixing it okay now you have in that water uh, fermentation broth you have added DCM which is a organic solvent so there will be phase separation of butanol in between water uh, and organic solvent so after mixing and phase separation the organic fraction is estimated to have butanol con uh, concentration of 5 gram per liter now what is the uh, distribution coefficient so you have to do is that you have to do the amount of uh, butanol the total amount of butanol concentration which is 20 and the amount of butanol present in the uh, organic solvent which is 5 so that is 4 okay so the answer is 4 I uh, hope you have understood this is just uh, how the thing is getting separated and how much fraction is present in the uh, organic solvent. The partition coefficient Kd depends on physical properties of the molecule, depends on the chemical properties of the analyte, depends both physical and chemical properties of the analyte, is independent of the physical and chemical properties of the analyte. So it definitely depends on both physical and chemical properties of the an analyte. Okay depends on both uh, physical and chemical properties of the analyte. Given below uh, at the partition coefficient of various com uh, compounds, compound A Kd equals to 5, compound B Kd equals to 2, compound C Kd equals to 10, compound D Kd equals to 7. Measure of those compounds is passed through a chromatography column. What will be the order of elution of the individual com uh, compound? Okay. So we know the, uh, the lower the KD will elute faster. So the, uh, the what will be the order of elution? The order will be B, then A, then D, then C. Okay. So B, A, D, C. Go to next slide. The ability of chromatographic column to separate two analyte picks from one another is called resolution. Okay. So it's resolution it's not separation separation is happening but the ability the ability of the chromatographic column to separate two analyte picks are called resolution in column chromatography the number of distribution planes is directly proportional to dash and inversely proportional to dash in column chromatography the number of distribution planes So in column chromatography, the number of distribution planes is directly proportional to dash and inversely uh, proportional to dash. Uh, the number of distribution plane is directly proportional to the height of the column and inversely proportional to the height of distribution plane. So the answer is this. Ion exchange chromatography separates the analyte based on charge because we have cation exchange chromatography and anion, anion exchange chromatography to isolate cation and anion. Okay. Then, in which type of chromatography interaction between matrix and analyte is depends on isoelectric point? It depends on ion exchange chromatography. In a cation exchange chromatography, the column is packed with positively charged beads. The column is packed with negatively charged beads. Uh, and both and uh, neither of this. Uh, so negatively charged proteins bind to positive charged columns. Uh, both positively, positively negatively charged beads are present. So the answer will be in cation exchange. You are exchanging cation, so you have to have negatively charged beads. Okay. So that is uh, the column is packed with negatively charged beads. DEA sephitic column is used for purification of DEA sephitic. So you have I have shown some um, examples of this columns uh, beads uh, for purification of cations and anions. So this is for acidic protein. Which of the following techniques uh, is best suited for initial purification of untagged protein from mixture of various plant protein? untagged proteins so you have to do ion exchange chromatography and hydrophobia interaction chromatography these are the suited 
you can't do directly gel filtration chromatography because uh, you have to do some initial purification to do that. Uh, so you, you can do ion exchange chromatography, which will be very much specific, and also hydrophobic interaction chromatography. And untagged, that is, you can't do. Uh, so you, uh, we do a tagging. We can add his tag or GST, so so that we can proceed with some affinity chromatography. But this is untagged, so we can't uh, proceed to affinity chromatography unless and until your protein has affin particular aff affinity towards any macromolecule uh, because you don't have any tags so you can't proceed with this given below are the steps for preparing matrix beds for ion exchange chromatography one removal of very small particles equilibration with courier ions swelling of medium what is the correct order the correct order is uh, the steps of preparing matrix beds for ion exchange chromatography you have to first uh, swelling uh, you have to swell the media swelling the media then you will do removal of very small um, particles and then you do equilibration with counter ions that is 3 1 2 the interaction of proteins with uh, hydrophobic, hydrophobic interaction chromatography column involves hydrophobic interactions okay as simple as that then we'll go for the next question which type of chromatography can be used for purifying heavy metal contaminated water ion exchange chromatography so we in details we have learned uh, in the previous class that ion exchange chromatography do we perform to purify heavy metal contaminated water in hic column the matrix with aromatic ring makes additional pi pi interaction okay additional pi pi interaction how is protein eluted out of hic column by changing polarity of mobile phase now we'll go over some previous year assignment so that uh, for you it will be easier to uh, it will be easier to uh, solve this year's recent assignment which you have to submit so the first question is purification yield is highest in hydrophobic interaction chromatography, gel filtration chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, affinity chromatography is highest in affinity chromatography. Chaotropic agents helps in elution by removing both receptor and ligand from matrix, change in pH, partially denaturing the receptor, competitive binding with the ligand. So this will be chaotropic agents helps in elution by partially denaturing the receptor. Equilibration of an affinity column with buffer containing 0.5 molar NSL is done to reduce non-specific binding of immobilized uh, receptors with the analyte proteins. Stabilizing the covalent linkage between receptors and the matrix wash unbound receptors from the affinity column increasing hygroscopic property of the polysaccharide matrix so we use because uh, to avoid non-specific interaction um, of immobilized receptors with the analyte proteins which of the following reactive group is formed more on the dextran matrix upon treatment with cndr Okay, so uh, which of the following reactive group is formed more on the dextran matrix upon treatment to CNBR? Uh, so this is one second. Uh, this is imida carbonate. Where should the GST be inserted into uh, to produce the recombinant protein for affinity purification? before the non-coding sequence of the protein, in the non-coding sequence of the protein, inside the coding sequence of the protein, before and after the coding sequence of the protein. So you have to have, uh, so before or after your 
protein sequence. So if, if your protein sequence is this, you can put the GHT sequence here or you can put here before or after. So that is either N terminal or C terminal of your protein sequence. Cytokines from patient's serum can be purified by running into the column with secondary antibodies. Biotinylated cytokines immobilized in streptavidin coated glass bits. A column of immobilized avidin bound to biotin level antibodies against cytokines. Uh, Biotinylated uh, chemokines linked with streptavidin content in atrium. So, what do you feel? I feel that uh, the answer will be the column of immobilized uh, uh, avidin bound to biotin. Okay biotin labeled antibodies against cytokine so you need to uh, purify cytokine so you have to have some antibody which will capture the cytokine so you have the antibody so now if you are tagging biotin with your antibody and your column has avidin so avidin will bind with biotin and then biotin have the antibody conjugated now when you are passing through uh, passing your cytokines so that cytokine will get bind with this antibody okay uh, your column will be like this you have bits with biotin tagged antibody and you are uh, passing cytokine so cytokine will be captured with the antibody NIET columns are used to purify heat stack proteins okay because uh, it, it has affinity towards the histidine aromatic chain, chain okay the imidazole chain uh, so GST tagged proteins can be purified using glutathione glutathione coupled matrix which of the following strategy is not used for illusion in affinity chromatography uh, so uh, for is not used in illusion of so in affinity chromatography generally what you do you elude with the um, substance which has more affinity towards uh, which has more affinity towards your um, uh, like towards the NINTA than your protein so you you use that you you use that you don't do that much change in salt concentration to elude so the answer will be change in salt concentration you don't do that uh, so GST glutathione interaction is an example of bioaffinity in uh, chromatography the CNBR activated polysaccharide matrices reacts with free amine uh, groups on the receptor of covalent linkage heparin uh, heparin couple matrix can be used to purify which of the following molecule heparin couple matrix is used to purify DNA binding, binding proteins DNA binding proteins. Adjuvants are often combi combined with an antigen during emulsification. The purpose of emulsification is to enhance immunogenicity of the antigen, promotes faster release and clearing of the antigen from the body, reduce the antibody production against the antigen, inhibit cell mediated immune response against the antigen. So it basically adjuvants are often combined with an antigen uh, during emulsification. The purpose of emulsification is to enhance immunogenicity of the antigen. What is the function of booster injections in antibody production against an antigen? So it booster injection we know it increases the memory B cells and antibodies. Uh, isourea ester is an intermediate chemical group formed during the process of receptor coupling with what with uh, carbodiimide so uh, this concepts we have not gone through yet we will discuss today now we'll go to next slide so we'll uh, we'll discuss uh, we'll revisit whatever sir has already taught so we know with, uh, for the purification of the protein uh, we can uh, we can rely on affinity, we can rely on charge, hydrophobicity and surface area to purify uh, based on their affinity, charge, hydrophobicity and surface area. So um, and uh, based on that there are different kind of chromatography techniques, ion exchange chromatography, hydrophobic uh, interaction chromatography, gel filtration chromatography and affinity chromatography. So. Um, we have already discussed this uh, hydrophobic interaction, uh, um, ion exchange and gel filtration we started. Today we will uh, do affinity and a little bit of gel filtration chromatography. So pr for protein folding you already know that uh, protein presence in uh, primary uh, structure which is peptide chains and then it might be uh, partially folded, it can be properly folded and uh, so if you, so this is a, so this is a just representative structure of uh, uh, 
cartoon structure protein so so hydrodynamic value if if a protein is like circular is sphere kind of so uh, so I, here you have seen that this is a increasing uh, order of uh, increasing molecular weight order so you protein can be of 5 to 15 to 35 to 95 kd molecular weight and if you see from the top view uh, of a sphere of a globular protein you can uh, get to know the hydrodynamic size and all also hydrodynamic volume okay and also size so uh, here you can see the hydrodynamic volumes are uh, going uh, in, in, is keep on increasing and uh, so the size also so uh, so uh, uh, so there are seeding effects uh, when you are doing change filtration chromatography or any chromatography where you have sieve so there in the sieve you can have large pores you can have small pores uh, exclusion of large sized uh, molecules uh, and inclusion of small molecules from uh, pores so what is happening if you have uh, very large uh, molecules those won't fit inside the pores uh, and but if you have small molecules they will go through the pores and will take time uh, to pass the column so the principle be behind this is that injection of sample mixture big and small molecule injection of sample mixture you have you have uh, big and small molecules distribution based on molecular size there will be distribution the large size will go faster the smaller will go slower slower illusion of molecule in decreasing order of size that's why illusion will happen in the decreasing order of size the column is placed with the beads containing pores to allow entry of molecules based on their sizes smallest size in the inner part of pore followed by gradual increasing size and largest molecule excluded from entering the gel the separation between molecules occurred due to the time they travel to come out from the pores when the mobile fins pass through the column it takes protein along with it the small molecules present in the inner part of the gel takes longer uh, flow of liquid and travel longer per to come out whereas larger molecules travel less distance to come out as a result, the large molecule and small molecule get separated from each other. Uh, so this is the principle of gel filtration chromatography that larger molecules will not go inside those pores and will elute faster, but the smaller molecules will try to travel through the pores so it will take time to cover the entire distance. This is how the curve is, that this is the elution time or elution volume that is your, uh, how much time is taking to get eluted this is the value of absorbance uh, so your proteins are coming so that's why you are getting higher value of absorbance uh, so this is large molecule medium and small so suppose the total column volume of a gel is vt then it is given by vt equals to vz vt equals to sorry so it's given by Vt equals to Vz plus Vi plus Vo. Vz is the volume of gel matrix, Vi is the pore volume and V0 is the boiled volume. The volume of mobile phase flow to elute a column from a column is known as elution volume. The elution volume is related to the void volume and distribution coefficient Kd. So V equals to V0 plus Kd V1. So the elution volume is related to the void volume. Okay. And the distribution coefficient Kd is uh, Kd equals to V minus V0 that is elution volume minus uh, the uh, V0 that is void volume divided by Vi. Vi is the pore volume. So you have to know this Kd formula. So Kd equals to V minus V0 by Vi. Kd is the ratio of uh, inner volume available for an analyte and it is independent of the column geometry or length. Three different type of analytes are possible in gel filtration chromatography. Analyte with Kd equals to 0 or V equals to V0. This analyte will be completely excluded from the column. Analyte with Kd 1. Uh, so you have some assignments related to, to this. So understand carefully that analyte, uh, whichever analyte you have, Kd equals to 0. Uh, so, uh, or V equals to V0, that is uh, your illusion volume will come to void volume, that the analyte will be completely excluded from the column. Analyte with Kd equals to 1, that is illusion volume equals to V0 plus like void volume plus inner pore volume. This analyte will be completely in the pore of the column. Analyte with Kd greater than 1, in this situation analyte will adsorb to the column matrix. Okay, this you have to understand. This these things choice of matrix 
now the choice of the column depends on the range of molecular weight and presence of uh, presence sorry sorry pre uh, pressure uh, limit of the operating equipment a list of popular jet position is listed down so cefedex g10 uh, fraction range in dalton you can do uh, up to 700 dalton cefedex g25 this is one uh keda to 5 keda cefedex g50 uh, Till 1.5 to 30 keda, uh, G100 is uh, 150 keda, uh, G200 is 5 keda to 600 keda, 4B and 6B and so on. So this is the sample. This is the again detector uh, signal and time. This is where you load. This is the time where you loaded your sample, and then you are getting a baseline. So this is the till then. This is the volume vo void volume, and you have. Um, you, you, so this is a void volume, and you gradually you will be having your dilution samples. Mm -hmm. Then um, you you can plot this uh, graphs in a curve also according to your uh, uh, exclusion limit and fractional range. so uh, then we'll move forward so for the column packing the column material is allowed to swell in the mobile phase it is poured into the glass tube and allow the bits to settle without trapping air bubble within the column so you have to uh, follow this thing that so, so that you don't uh, trap air bubbles into inside the column so it's allowed to so at first the first uh, thing uh, you, you have to do is that you have to swell in the mobile phase so whatever the mobile phase is the column material you have to swell in it is poured in a, so it is poured inside a glass tube and allow the bits settle down without trapping air bubble within the column um, then you have to check the flow rate and also back pressure now to column packing which is quality checking also for column packing the column material uh, is allowed to swell in the mobile phase it is poured into the uh, glass tube and allow the bits to settle without trapping air bubble within the column once the matrix is settled to give a column it can be tested for pressure uh, presence of air channel and well packing by flowing uh, uh, an analyte with kd equals to 1 it is expected that dilution volume in this case is void volume plus um, uh, the pore size pore volume okay so kd equals should be v minus v0 divided by pi travel shooting with gel filtration chromatography back pressures you have to see clogging if there is any clogging happens precipitation of protein um, operation of gel filtration chromatography sample preparation the sample is prepared in the mobile phase and it should be free of suspended particles to avoid clogging so you have to uh, so before loading the sample you have to send it to the sample for for 30 minutes or 25 minutes so whatever those small particles you have uh, it will sediment down and precipitate and you will collect the supernatant and load into your column okay so the most recommended uh, method to apply the sample is to inject with a syringe so you will take a syringe you will from the syringe you will uh, um, take your sample and you have to make sure that inside the upper side of the syringe you, you should not have any air bubble so you you can't introduce any air bubble inside that tubing okay so you just tap it and you just remove all those air bubble and only load your sample with syringe so operation of gel filtration chromatography elution in gel filtration column no gradient of salt is used to elute the sample from the column the flow of mobile phase is used to elute the molecules from the column okay so uh, then column regeneration uh, uh, after you elute your sample you have to do your column regeneration for further um, different samples so after the analysis of analyte gel filtration column is washed with a sol coating containing mobile phase to remove all non specifically absorbed protein to the matrix the column is then equilibrated with mobile phase to regenerate the column the column can be stored at 4 degree in the presence of 20% alcohol containing 0.05% sodium azide now we'll go to the next class of gel filtration chromatography by professor vishal trivedi so here some research problems have, have been discussed so we'll go through it if you have any problem uh, or had problem you can please let me know so here the question is a phd student wants to determine the structure of a protein x from micro bacterium tuberculosis 
with the help of X-ray crystallography. He has cloned the protein in E. coli expression system and set up the crystal by endodermine gradient precipitate instead of crystals. Now, he wants to design few experiments to check the quality of the protein purified from E. coli expression system. Molecular weight, native conformation of phallic oligomeric st uh, status. So, what he can do is that he can check the molecular of the protein he needs needs to know and uh, you, 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 so what is the uh, in the uh, in uh, what is the native conformation with oligomeric status so when he is purifying whether it's aggregating he can um, run a native page so he can get to know that whether it's aggregating or and what is the oligomeric states he is uh, facing he can do uh, ac size extrusion chromatography if it's getting aggregated or getting bigger in size it, it will come out early uh, uh, so that's that's the principle behind it relationship between molecular weight and key average so kd equals to elution volume minus void volume divided by vi the molecular weight and size of a protein is related to the shape of the molecule and the relationship between molecular weight and radius of the gyration as follows radius of gyration proportional to ma so here e is a constant and it depends on shape of the molecule a equals to 1 for uh, rod and a equals to 0 0.5 for coils and a equals to 0 0.33 for spherical molecules okay this is the same curve you can get gel filtration chromatography native molecular weight okay you can do that and you can compare with denatured molecular weight also that what is coming when it's denatured and in monomer so native molecular weight determination by gel filtration in conjugation with hds page can be used to determine the oligomeric status of the protein so oligomeric status equals to molecular weight which you are getting in gel filtration divided by molecular weight you are getting in hds page okay if you are getting in gel filtration that is 120 keta and it, if you are getting in molecular weight hds is 40 keta that is 120 divided by 40 that is trimeric okay oligomeric state is trimeric now research problem 2 the protein X is present in three oligomeric status, monomer, dimer, and tetramer. Now scientist wants to study the stability of the protein. So this is how the native protein looks. You are adding urea 2 molar, partially unfolded protein this is. This is uh, you are adding urea 4 molar, it's again getting partially unfolded. And you are adding more 8 molar, again it's getting more unfolded. Now what, what uh, you are observing, you are obser observing that So you are observing that for the native, um, uh, so when you, whenever you are feeling that the native protein uh, getting unfolded, the size is getting increased, okay. So you can study the protein folding uh, through this. So the protein structure has a multi-level organization, you know. So it can uh, form a primary structure uh, where you can get the sequence of the protein. You have the secondary structure, which is composed of alpha helix, beta shades, and turns. You, you have the tertiary and quaternary structure. When protein is incubated with increasing concentration of denaturing substance, so it what happens? It unfolds a protein. Okay, unfolds a native structure into unfolded, extended conformation. Okay. So uh, from the native protein, you will have partially unfolded protein. You have more unfolded protein and so on. And uh, if you have more amount of urea, that is eight molar, your uh, uh, amount of unfolded protein will be greater. So what will happen if the, um, if the uh, size is getting increased? So that protein is coming out in the void volume after an injection. So this is how we'll uh, study the protein unfolding and refolding. So this is a research problem too we need to discuss and uh, for uh, to able to understand clearly you have to have the concept clear okay that's it that is how uh, this is why the we have this research problem also throughout the lectures if you have any doubt please feel free feel free to ask me regarding this
any doubt so far? Question 10, assignment, assignment 4. Okay, this question, right? Okay, so we'll be answering uh, 10 assignment 4. Okay. So, which of the following technique is best suited for initial purification of untagged protein from mixture of various plant proteins? So, okay. So, so far we have discussed how you can purify your protein. Okay. So, at first what happens when you do, you have a mixture of plant proteins or you have a mixture of bacterial proteins or mammalian proteins. That means you have... So, okay, so that means you have a mixture of different molecular weights, different affinity, uh, different uh, PI proteins. So, at first you can't do uh, and also different sizes. Some protein sizes will match, some protein sizes will not match, okay. So, you ha have a different varieties. You can't do them, you can't do very specific uh, like uh, protein purification strategy that is very specific means you want to wait let me yeah so very specific means you want to purify your protein based on size how you can do that just think if you have protein of 40 kata okay a protein and another protein b size is also same this protein a this is protein b both are of 40 kata so you won't be able to purify both pro those proteins based on gel filtration because gel filtration will tell you about the size only. You can't do that again. Which of the following techniques best suited for initial purification of untagged proteins? Okay. Then it comes hydrophobic interaction chromatography. So for the hydrophobic interaction also, there are some proteins whose hydrophobic interaction with the hydrophobic column might be similar. So that also you can't do at one go, okay. Affinity purification. If the protein is already untagged, that is, the protein ha doesn't have any his tag, the protein doesn't have any GST tag, it doesn't have, the protein itself doesn't have any specific affinity towards any specific thing, that is any antibody or something like that. So you have to uh, purify based on their charges their pi okay this will vary so what you can do along with hydrophobic interaction chromatography you can do ion exchange chromatography so that based on pi values you can separate you can do cation exchange chromatography and ion exchange chromatography and then followed by at later stages stages when you know when, when you know the pi of the protein so you can do that okay and after that when you get to know that your protein has come out also, if there are some contamination, you can further do gel filtration chromatography. So, you can't do at this step, you can't do gel filtration chromatography, right? So, the what the answer will be? Your answer will be ion exchange chromatography and hydrophobic interaction chromatography. Sorry, this one because you know the PI of those uh, amino acids and the whole protein, okay? I, if it's still not clear, please let me know. Okay, thanks. So, if anyone has any doubt, please let me know. I am going over some lectures um, already taught by Professor. Uh, Vishal sir, so that it will be easier to you again revisit and then uh, do the solve the assignments. So I have uh, gone through that week 4 assignment and week 5 and 6 assignment of previous year 
so that you will feel uh, more comfortable in uh, solving this year's assignments so we were at okay okay so we were at research problem 2 now we'll start research problem 3 a scientist has isolated a unique protein responsible for induction of apoptosis in a cell. He suspects that the protein might be interacting with DNA and disturb its replication. Now we need to design experiment to study interaction of DNA with protein. How you can do that? So experimental design will be the ligand or DNA binding the protein induces conformational changes result into into change in size and shape so always if the interaction is happening or not you can be able to tell by emsa okay you can do electrophoretic mobility shift assay but gel for, during the purification also you can be able to know because during gel purification chromatography you are tracking the molecular weight so if your protein is interacting with ligand so there will be shift in the ligand protein and also there will be shift in the like ligand protein complex and only ligand so if your ligand is small and it's interacting with another protein small so ligand and protein is getting together and accumulating and making a large complex which is larger than individual one right, right? so when you are injecting the larger complex you will get to elute get to see elution of uh, ligand plus protein complex at uh, like earlier elution fractions so this is how you will be able to uh, uh, understand the exact appearance exact molecular weight of this uh, larger complex okay so in step one a gel filtration column is equilibrated with a buffer and elution profile of lig ligand is recorded now column is equilibrated with a buffer containing ligand molecule as a concentration of ligand is increased protein binds ligands and form a larger complex with an increase in hydrodynamic surface area so whenever the ligand is interacting with uh, the protein molecules what is happening the hydrodynamic surface area is getting increased so as a result protein peak shifts towards left so gel filtration chromatography with buffer containing uh, protein incubation with different concentration of dna so yeah you can you can um, incubate your protein with different concentration of ligand so you can you will get to know that what concentration is getting bound so with the concentration of ligand will increase uh, with fixed amount of protein free ligand will appear in the photogram The protein amount and the concentration at which free ligand appeared and the elution data can be used to calculate the stoichiometry ratio of ligand protein and uh, the uh, equilibrium constant. Okay, so the how much ligand is free ligand is present and how much ligand protein complex is present by this you can uh, calculate uh, ligand like equilibrium constant uh, from this data. Now, if you have any doubt, please let me know else will uh, go for the research problem 3 a scientist wants to record cd spectrum in water but uh, protein is being purified with a differential precipitation of ammonium sulfate and has large amount of ammonium sulfate the protein is sensitive and degrades during long hour dialysis so he has to design an experiment to remove ammonium sulfate from protein so what to do you she he or she can do desalting Desalting means desalting or removal of small molecules from the protein is important for activity assay and other downstream process. So, in the dis desalting, he he or she can uh, isolate the salt from the his or her protein. Okay. So, a gel filtration column is equilibrated with a buffer or water, and then the sample for desalting is loaded. After the run, the protein and salt are diluted separately as P. This is a desalting column. So this is protein plus salt. While diluting, the protein has come out first, and salt will come later. So different chromatography techniques. Now we will be uh, starting with affinity chromatography.
if you have already gone through the lectures and if you have any specific doubt you can let me know so the principle of affinity chromatography works on the principle of mutual recognition forces between a ligand and receptor the major determinants responsible to provide specificity are shape complementarity electrostatic hydrogen bonding van der waals interaction between the groups present on the ligand receptor pair so the receptor uh, and the ligand ha ca can have salt breeze the hydrogen bonding van der waals interaction pi pi interaction so this is receptor and ligand it it has equilibration with receptor ligand uh, complex a mutual interaction between a ligand and receptor forms ligand receptor complex with a dissociation constant kd which is expressed as follows kd goes to rl divided by rl affinity chromatography so this is matrix uh, so in the affinity chromatography what happens you have a immobilized ligand okay and which you use to purify your protein okay so you will load your protein and it that protein has affinity towards the ligand which is immobilized it will bind so this is how the affinity chromatography works so when a crude mixture is passed through an affinity column the receptor present on the matrix with the ligand present on different molecules the mutual collision between receptor on matrix and ligands from different molecules test the affinity between them and consequently the best choice bind to the receptor so this is a receptor this is the molecule the target molecule a wash step removes remaining weakly bound so if your protein or other contaminated protein is binding weakly very weakly with the immobilized resin or column a ligand then what will happen if you give a wash step it will uh, so it will remove those weakly bound molecules subsequently a counter ligand is used to elute the bound molecule through a competition now if you are adding another ligand which has higher affinity towards this then what will happen it will uh, elute uh, so it what will happen it will bind with this and uh, it will elute it okay so subsequently a counter ligand is used to elute the bound molecule through a competition uh, between the matrix bound molecule and counter ion now advantages uh, specificity affinity chromatography is specific to the analyte in comparison to other um, purification technique which is utilized which are utilizing molecular size charge hydrophobic patches or isolytic point purification yield compared to other purification method a uh, method affinity purification gives very high level of purification fold with high yield in a typical affinity purification more than 90% recovery is uh, possible so this is conventional chromatography uh, this is how the yield goes uh, and this is for affinity chromatography affinity chromatography it gives a uh, uh, good amount of yield because it goes on uh, like how much how much ever affinity your protein has with the receptor immobilized in the column reproducible affinity purification is reproducible and gives consistent results from one purification to other as long as it's independent uh, to the presence of contamination contaminating species easy to perform affinity purification is very robust and it depends on uh, force governing ligand receptor complex formation compared to other techniques no column packing no special purification system and sample preparation required for affinity purification different types of affinity chromatography affinity chromatography is further divided into the uh, different types based on the nature of receptor present on matrix to binds uh, tags uh, present on the analyte molecule different types of affinity chromatography are so uh, affinity chromatography you can further divide it into different types okay based on the nature of receptor present on the matrix so what is the receptor present on the matrix which is immobilized uh, also uh, to binds the tag present on the analyte so one is bio affinity chromatography 
In this type of affinity chromatography, biomolecules are used as receptors present on matrix and it exploit the biological affinity phenomenon such as antibody antigen. In addition, an enzyme substrate or enzyme inhibitor is also belongs to this class, example GST glutathione. So in this type of affinity chromatography, biomolecules are used as receptors. So if there is whatever receptor you have, that is the biomolecule. It can be antibody or it can be an antigen. So uh, example of uh, bioaffinity chromatography is GST glutathione. Pseudo affinity chromatography. In this affinity chromatography, a non biological molecule is used as receptor on matrix to explore the separation and purification of biomolecules. There are two specific examples di affinity chromatography. In this method, matrix is coupled to the reactive dye, and the matrix bound dye has specificity towards a particular enzyme. For example, Shivachron blue F3Z uh, A dye coupled to the dextran matrix has strong affinity towards dehydrogenase. Metal affinity chromatography in this method transition metals such as Fe plus 2, Na plus 2 or zinc plus 2 is coupled to the matrix and the matrix bound metal form multi dented complex with protein containing polyhistac. The affinity of protein for matrix bound metal is different and these differences are being exploited uh, in metal affinity chromatography to purify the protein. Okay, So there are um, this bio uh, affinity chromatography, then uh, pseudo affinity chromatography, which can be di affinity or metal affinity. So, different affinity chromatography. So, this is the activated thiol gel uh, which has a disulfate bond uh, and then a protein which has SH, the thiol protein. Now, uh, bound thiol protein. So, what is happening here? There is an exchange between the, the, between the protein and this R group. So this is a differential type of chromatography technique where binding of analyte to the matrix is not reversible. So the binding of analyte with the matrix is not reversible. So as it involves the formation of covalent bond, okay. So if there is a formation of covalent bond between functional group present on the matrix and the analyte. So thiol group that is SH present on the neighboring residue of protein form disulfate bond after oxidation and under reducing environment. Disulfide reversible broken uh, back to free thiol uh, groups. The matrix um, in covalent chromatography has immobilized thiol group which forms covalent linkage with the free thiol group. So, uh, what, uh, so free thiol group containing protein present in the mixture. After washing step to remove non-specifically bound protein, um, a mobile phase containing compound with reducing thiol group is passed to elude the bound protein. The thiol uh, group containing compound uh, present in the mobile phase breaks the disulfide bond between protein and matrix thiol group to release uh, the protein. So this is how the protein released. Okay. So if you are adding uh, excess uh, thiol group, so it will get in the thiol group will interact with the protein and the protein will be eluted. So matrix containing uh, receptor for ligand uh, present on protein. So receptor 5 prime AMP affinity towards protein ligand NAD plus dependent dehydrogenase. 2 prime 5 prime ADP NAD plus dependent dehydrogenase. Avidin uh, biotin containing enzymes. Protein A and protein G for immunoglobin you can use. Concavalin A you can use glycoprotein. Poly A you can use poly A well, to purify poly U mRNA. Lysine you can use for rRNA. Uh, lectin you can use for glycoprotein. Heparin you can use for DNA binding site. So this is again the picture uh, we, which we are discussing. Any doubt? So we'll start uh, the generation of the receptor. The receptor molecule present on the matrix can be produced either by genetic engineering, isolation from the crude extract, or in the case of antibody, it is produced uh, in the mouse rapid model and purified. So uh, you can do genetic engineering, isolation of the crude uh, extract, and you can also generate antibody to generate the receptor. Now, uh, the, and this is antigen. Uh, so what happens? The heptin then uh, do the antigen presentation you know so uh, what is happening if you are injecting the uh, um, antigen towards the uh, um, animals there will be immunization antibody will be produced so antibody generation will test uh, you will collect the serum and purification of the antibody will happen okay 
so this is how you raise the antibody na so you will inject the antigen first and then from um, animal model you will uh, get those antibody so how to prepare those antigen the antigen required for the development of polyclonal antibodies is 2 mg is required for multiple injections to induce robust immune response it has following steps production of antigen recombinant dna technology you can do to produce antigen isolation of antigen there are two different approaches to isolate the antigen from e coli over expression cells uh infusion antigen under native condition that is you can uh, purify the antigen as a native conformation so you uh, so you can do column chromatography isolation of antigen un under denaturing condition so you can do electro elution of antigen from hds page so isolation of antigen from hds page resolve uh, antigen in hds page uh, identify the region of interest okay cut the protein band from the hds page you have to cut the protein band and then do electro elution so in the so what you are doing here is a protein inside this bag you, uh, so here in, and, and and outside the bag in the solution you have salt so uh, so if you do electrophoresis what will happen uh, so you you will get the protein separated and you will uh, so the gel slice will be separated from the protein okay if you have any salts in the gel slice and all you have you, you those will be separated out and after electro elution you will do, you will concentrate the antigen so generation of the antibody preparation of antigen for injection combine 100 microliter of antigen with an equal volume of uh, freyors incomplete adjuvant to a final volume of 200 microliter so you, you are mixing antigen with the adjuvant to increase the immunogenicity so mix thoroughly to uh, obtain uh, the emulsion using a syringe or a pipette after 4 weeks of first injection inject first booster dose oh, booster dose so uh, to increase again the uh, increase the antibody uh, amount of antibody you have to give a booster dose after 4 weeks and repeat the booster injection 4 to 5 times after after every 4 weeks to generate a robust immune response and add uh, development of memory b cells in vivo immunization immunization of rabbit before immunization take out 5 to 10 ml mice blood from the rabbit before the first injection incubate the sample at 4 degree at 30 minutes and allow the blood to clot centrifuge the sample at 7000 gb for 10 minutes collect the serum and store it at minus 20 degree uh, and labeled as pre immune serum inject 200 ml antigen mixture per rabbit during this step either use a helper uh, to hold the rabbit so yeah this is the protocol for if you are doing the experiment uh, always have to have a body system to hold the rabbit and then so that you will be able to do efficiently inject the antigen on the back of the rabbit the, uh, in the uh, in the form of buttons then we what is booster so combine 100 ml of antigen with an equal volume of fresh incomplete adjuvant to a final volume of 200 whatever you will done so this is also uh, a part of booster injection so have to in, uh, increase the um, um, amount of antibody determination of antibody titers so before immunization take out uh, so before doing immunization if you are taking out blood from the rabbit before the first injection okay so here it has stated that incubate the sample and pour it at 30 minutes and allow the blood to clot okay so you are keeping the sample at freeze for 30 minutes and what will happen the blood will start clotting now you are centrifuging the sample okay so what will happening the blood will clot and you are getting the sera serum means it has antibodies okay it is serum now store at minus 20 why it's stating the store at minus 20 because we know if we keep the protein that is antibody at room temperature it will degrade if we keep the keep at 4 degree we it can survive for some some days it's based on it's always based on the based on which protein you are working in it's always good to store your sera whether it's 
fever bovine serum or any serum isolated from any uh, animals it's always best to store at minus 20 to keep it active throughout okay at how much ever time you need to keep it active so that it doesn't get degraded the concentration doesn't get messed up i hope uh, you can understand upasna so now what will happening is that uh, you will determine the antibody titer so uh, for titer determination also you have to isolate the rabbit blood from you can isolate from ear vein uh, so that you can easily uh, take out incubate the sample at 4 degree 30 minute and allow the blood to clot uh, again the same thing now you have to collect the serum okay so the serum now has antibody okay what you will do you will do the determine the antibody by an indirect ELISA so in there what is it is ELISA that you will add antigen and antibody and you will see that whether the antibody is able to bind to the antigen efficiently okay so you will do ELISA to check that another collection of blood and preparation of serum so again you will uh, uh, again isolate the blood in large amount uh, so if you need a large quantity of blood you can just puncture the cardiac from the heart you can take out the blood uh, because but it's not recommended as rabbit will not survive for future immunization at this stage so then what will do it will again incubate the sample for some time and then allow the blood to clot and then you will centrifuge and again collect the serum now uh, you have now got the antibody you have got to know that the antibody is efficient enough to bind to your antigen so uh, once you have the receptor uh, it can be coupled to the matrix by following step number one is matrix activation number two is covalent coupling utilizing reactive group on ligand number three deactivation of the remaining active group on matrix so this is ap chlorohydrin mediated receptor coupling so th here comes the how the, how do you make so this steps that how do you make the thing this regeneration generally we don't do in our lab you can do you can do but we don't do what do what people do in general because these are very tedious process you have so if you want a resin if, uh, if you want to purify your protein and for that you want an antibody conjugated with resin you won't wait for one year for infecting your um, like mice and taking those you don't do this so those are co commercially available so these are these steps which the commercial persons the technical persons do uh, and then they sell it so this is another metal which is ap chlorohydrin mediated receptor coupling this is polysaccharide matrix and you have ap fluorohydrin so this uh, oxygen group will bind with this matrix and the, the so using this ap chlorohydrin there is some chemical reaction which will activate the matrix now if you add receptor nh2 it will uh, it will bind to the uh, so here you can see this oxygen is binding with a chlorine so here those uh, uh, oxygen is from in as a uh, uh, as a epoxide so it will bind to the nh nh uh, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, and also receptor has this nh2 group so from that nh will get bound now what will happen this is a affinity matrix so it has the receptor uh, which is conjugated by this amine bond uh, bond so ap chlorohydrin activates the polysaccharide matrix by adding oxidant group with three carbon al alcohol group uh, that is uh, ch2 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 uh, ch2 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 this is three carbon uh, alcohol group um, spe spacer arm activated matrix reacts with the receptor containing primary amine or thiol group receptor are coupled to the matrix by a thioester or a secondary amine linkage it can be able to couple hydroxyl uh, group containing receptor molecule as well as uh, by a ethyl linkage So carbo, uh, carbodimines mediated receptor coupling. So here you have the polysaccharide matrix with COOH group and you have carbonimide. 
R N double one C double one N and R prime group. So now you have uh, isourea ester. Um, so so this is now again the matrix is activated and you are adding receptor to it and this is how you are making carbonamides uh, mediate receptor coupling. So this reacts with the matrix containing carboxyl group to form a isourea ester. The activated matrix is then allowed to take up receptor molecules along with NH2 group and the receptors is getting coupled to the matrix. Operation of the affinity chromatography. So equilibration affinity column uh, material packed in column and equilibrate with a buffer containing high salt 0.5 molar uh, NaCl to reduce the non-specific interaction of protein with the analyte. So you are using higher uh, amount of salt to um, to reduce all those uh, non-specific interaction happens between uh, uh, other molecules um, to go away. Okay. So this is the affinity column. You are applying sample. You are using. Uh, you are doing uh, washing. Uh, so now uh, after washing, you have again the receptor ligand. And uh, when the ligand and receptor has got bound, you are doing the elution step. Now sample preparation. The sample is prepared in the mobile phase, and it should be free of suspended particle to avoid clogging of the column. The most recommended method to apply the sample is to inject the sample with a syringe. Elution. There are many ways to elute analyte from the affinity column. You can do increasing concentration of the counter ligand. You can change the pH uh, polarity of the mobile phase by a detergent or cryotropic salt to partially denature the receptor to reduce the affinity for bound ligand. So these are several ways you can do the elution. Column regeneration. After the elution of uh, analyte, affinity column requires a regeneration step to use next time so you have to again work so these columns you can use multiple times right so you have to regenerate the column uh, after you are done with your experiment so that the next time you can use the column again so for that after the elution of analyte affinity column requires a regeneration step to use next time so column is washed with six molar urea or guanidine hydrochloride what happens it will denature all the pro bound protein all the proteins which are bound to the column so uh, to remove all non specifically bound protein the column is then equilibrated with mobile phase to regenerate the column the column can be stored at uh, 4 degree Celsius in the presence of 20% uh, uh, air alcohol so so and also some sodium azide so that the column will be active and the column will not have any contamination fungal contamination and all so that you have to store the, the column in 20% ethanol with 0.05% sodium azide so so we'll describe uh, so uh, in your lecture you have already have uh, gone through the bio affinity chromatography so how what happens that you have a sacrose bead okay and you are coupling the bead with antigen so this is for the antibody purification so you have to couple the bead with antigen now um, antigen uh, so now the antigen sacrose beads are conjugated uh, then you do the sample preparation you will load and you will wash elution and regeneration of the column this is the workflow of bio affinity chromatography So bioaffinity chromatography can be of uh, so for making those bioaffinity uh, co column. Uh, so there are couple of examples. So one is CNBR mediated receptor coupling. CNBR mediated coupling is more suitable for antibody to the polysaccharide matrix such as agarose or dextrin. CNBR reacts with polysaccharide at pH 11 and 12 to form reactive cyanide ester with matrix or less reactive cyclic imidocarbonate group. Under alkaline condition, this cyanogen ester reacts with the amine group on receptor to form isourea derivative. The amount of cyanate ester is more with agarose, whereas imidocarbonate is more formed with dextrin as a matrix. The protein or peptide ligand with a free amino group is added to the activated matrix to couple the receptor for affinity purification. So you are adding CNBR. CNBR re reacts with the polysaccharide at pH 11, um, 11 12 to form the reactive cyanate ester with matrix or re less reactive cyan cyclic imidocarbonate group. And alka uh, under alkaline condition, this cyanogen ester. <coughs> <coughs> Ester reacts with the amine group pre uh, present on the receptor to form the isourea derivative. 
so now uh, uh, to purify antibody what you will do you will equilibrate uh, the column so at first you will wash the column with 0.5 molar uh, NSL to reduce non-specific interaction uh, then you will add sample then after that after adding sample you will let the sample bind with your column after that you will wash to uh, wash out or remove all the non-specific interaction is happening okay then you will do elution for elution what you will do you will increase the concentration of counter ligand so that the so that the receptor will bind with that lig counter ligand and your protein of interest that is the ligand will come out okay this is what you can do or what you can do you can change the ph up to 2 uh, of the uh, mobile phase so that the interaction will get hampered or you can add any detergent or chiotropic salt to partially denature the receptor to reduce the affinity for bound ligand you can add beta marker to ethanol or dtt also so that the interaction will get hampered then what will do neutralize the acidic elute so for antibody purification you relute is acidic so you have to neutralize with one molar tris p 7.2 containing 150 millimolar NSA. now we will do column regeneration so for further purification So within bioaffinity chromatography, you have also GST bed purification. So glutathione S transferase utilizes glutathione as a substrate to catalyze conjugation reactions for xenobiotic uh, detoxification purposes. The recombinant fusion protein contains GST as a tag is purified with glutathione coupled matrix. GST fusion protein is produced by the recombining protein of interest with GST codon sequence okay present in the expression vector so you are purifying your protein along with GST uh, before or after the coding sequence right so it is transformed over expressed and factorized containing fusion protein is purified using affinity chromatic column the sample is loaded on the column previously equilibrated with a buffer containing high salt 0.5 molar NSA so uh, you have the cell uh, you are adding protein where you have uh, GST, uh, G GSH and GST. Uh, for, the, for the protein, you have GST tag and in this, uh, in the column, you have uh, G GSH with the beads. So what is happening, uh, you are adding your protein and then uh, you are getting those, uh, in the flow through, you are getting all the proteins which have not bound. In the wash, you are adding, having uh, non-specific interaction non-specific proteins and you are eluting the protein uh, from the bits so what happens unbound protein will getting washed out the, and then fusion protein is eluted with different concentration of glutathione dissolved in the equilibration buffer so a purified fusion can be treated with thrombin to remove the gst tag from the protein of interest the mixture uh, so you can do thrombin cleavage basically if you have a cleavage tag uh, cleavage site in between gst and your protein the mixture containing free GST tag and the protein can be purified using the affinity color column as tag will bind to the matrix but protein will come out in the unbound fashion. Okay. Now uh, metal affinity chromatography. So example is NINT affinity chromatography because NI class 2 is a metal. So NTA agarose or sephiros beads we use. now uh, you are using you are doing charging so NINTA uh, so you are charging with the NI plus 2 uh, metals so that that is NINTA agarose sephiros beads you are applying sample and then doing the same process with that so now again in this lectures also professor has uh, discussed some research problems and um, your questions and all your concepts all rely on those research problems so please understand understand clearly what is going on so the problem is mycobacterium tuberculosis h uh, 37rb was treated with drug and it causes generation of oxidative oxidative stress inside the bacterial cells So, uh, inside the bacterial cells. 
the legal responsible for this effect was isolated and now PhD student wants to identify the adder proteins from Mycobacterium tuberculosis H37RB to understand the signaling events and associated molecular components. So uh, what is that? Uh, your MTB cell was treated with a drug okay, and it's causing uh, generation of oxidative stress. The, the MTB is now in oxidative stress inside the bacterial cells. The ligand responsible for this effect. So what is the ligand responsible? So how the drug is getting bound and what are the ligands, possible ligands uh, responsible for this effects was isolated and uh, now PhD student wants to identify the adapter protein. So the receptor is the ligand, uh, like the responsible ligand is found. Now what are the adapter proteins? That how, what are the receptors or the adapter proteins are bound with the ligand? So, and which are responsible for the signaling? So what is happening? He, so this is a ligand protein. So he or she has to isolate those. Uh, so while isolating, you will have those receptors also in the uh, which is which are, which are the adapter proteins. Okay. So the experiment performances will uh, around the recombinant DNA technology. So you have to production produce the ligand. You have to you have to couple the ligand with matrix. You have to do affinity purification as this way. So now you have the ligand. Ligand is isolated. You, if you want to purify those adapter proteins, so what is happening? The adapter proteins is getting bound with the ligand, fill bind. So the ligand we can use as a uh, coupled, uh, as a molecule coupled to matrix, so that whenever we'll pass the crude uh, cell extract, those adapter proteins will get bound with the ligand, and then we'll do the uh, affinity purification and we'll run the gel and see. So affinity column also can be used to study, to to uh, as a tool to study an isolated interacting partner of a particular protein. In this approach, the matrix is incubated with pro-pure protein one and then washed to ensure tight binding. All other sites on the bit is blocked with a non-specific protein such as PSA or an unrelated cell lysers. Now cell lysers on the pure protein two is passed onto the pro protein one containing bits followed by washing to remove all the unbounded proteins. Now the protein was is eluted from the matrix either by adding high concentration of ligands. You can uh, add high concentration of ligand or with denaturing condition. Okay, this is how you can pure uh, purify your adapter proteins. Now the eluted protein is analyzed to the uh, in the HDS page or HDS page followed by Western blotting to detect uh, protein one or protein two. As a control, cell lysate or protein 2 is also added to the matrix without protein A1 to rule out, the, rule out the possibility of protein 2 binding directly to the matrix. So this is the result. So you will do the affinity purification, then you will elude the protein and you will uh, check the molecular weight in the HDS page. Now research problem 2, protease PFI1625C was cloned from plasmodium falciferum 3d7 and a phd student wants to identify the substrate peptide sequence to understand its role in parasite metabolism and to design potent inhibitors so this is the peptide and you were using the protease okay the protease was cloned from plasmodium falciferum and um, you were doing you were uh, using this protease to cut a peptide so uh, to identify the substrate peptide sequence, so uh, when the protease is cutting this peptide, that means the peptide is the substance of this enzyme and he wants to understand the role in parasite metabolism and to design potent inhibitor. Okay, what you have to do now. So if you are adding the peptide with the matrix and then uh, adding your uh, protease, what will happen the peptide will get separated from the matrix so what they have done they have uh, with a bit they have added the peptide they added protease also so the bond gets cleavage clipped so you have the bit but not the peptide alert so now what will happen mm, you collect the supernatant from that so you in the 24 well dish you are now adding protease so to isolate your peptide and you collect the supernatant 
so uh, the superintendent contains the cut uh, peptide and you do the multi you do the mass spec so we will get to know the sequence of your uh, cut it peptide it will be in the superintendent only right so yeah this is a very cool experiment uh, people can do so in this experiment what are the uh, required items you need you need to isolate uh, pro produce the protease you need to uh, synthesis peptide you need to couple the peptide with matrix you need to do perform protease assay affinity chromatography and lcms so this is the result after sequencing okay now research problem 3 the cancer patients are treated with ayurvedic medicine medicines uh, to improve its immune responses against infectious agents now the doctor wants to measure the cytokine level in the in blood in the patients so what happens the cancer patients are treated with ayurvedic medicines to improve the immune responses now uh, if you improve uh, improve the immune responses now doctor wants to measure the cytokine level also what they can do they can generate an antibody against cytokine right and they can purify so now experimental design is that you have the lymphocyte ligand you have to isolate and then you can purify using a particular uh, ligand so your lymphocyte ligand will have cytokine and if you have uh, your uh, uh, antibody against cytokine bound to the matrix so cytokine will cap get captured uh, in the matrix and you will get purif purified cytokine right so what you will do you will isolate the blood you will make the serum and then uh, from in the serum uh, you have all those uh, desired proteins and you will do affinity purification so this is also called immunopurification because you are uh, taking help of antibody against the protein so the avidin biotin system is used to capture and isolate cytokines from immune cells biotinization of antibodies allows immu immobilization of antibodies in the correct orientation on the streptomycin coated glass beads lymphocyte lysate is passed to the column packed with the glass beads containing antibodies uh, bind cytokines the cytokines are eluted by uh, for flowing buffer or decreasing ph or by catartic ions the antibodies remain bound to the column due to strong affinity between avidin biotin which is resistant to this chemical treatment so uh, this is a lymphocyte uh, lysate so you will wash and you will then purify the cytokines okay so uh, this is how we will do you will biotinate the antibody and uh, and you will immobilize it so um, in so the, in the correct orientation on the streptomycin coated glass beads so lymphocyte lysate whenever you are passing through the column those glass beads containing antibody will capture the cytokines right and then you can elute uh, the cytokines by flowing buffer uh, or by decreasing ph or by some chaotropic salts so that the interaction between antibody and the uh, cytokine gets hindered so that is all for uh, affinity purification so i think uh, th these concepts are clear for you please uh, feel free to ask any doubt uh, i'm going through the lecture notes that is why that if you have during the lecture sessions if you have any doubt so that i can uh, talk again and we can discuss again so these are the lecture notes of uh, professor vishal trivedi you can find in the nptl website also uh, and uh, and these are the question we dis discussed uh, as a part of tutorial sessions uh, so we discussed week 4 and uh, previous uh, years question so if you have uh, any uh, additional doubt please let me know mm -hmm. so in the next class we'll discuss uh, week 5 and week 6 uh, assignments along with previous years assignments so that you it will be better for you to get understand So if you don't have uh, any question, we can end today's meeting. Please let me know if you have any questions.
don't have any further doubt we are ending today's session we'll meet again tomorrow with uh, with me we'll meet again uh, next class which is tuesday 6 to 8 uh, with a week 6 tutorial session thanks to all